Let's join Pastor Tim as he draws a conclusion in part two of the message, Help Wanted. Man, even the devil believes in God. How many have friends that say, oh, I, I believe in God? Well, so does the, the devil. He believes in God. That doesn't prove anything. That doesn't help anything, okay? Now listen. I love this. But do you want to know, O oh foolish man, that faith without works is dead? Was not Abraham our father justified by his works when he offered Isaac, his son, to the altar? Do you see that faith was working together with his works? And by works, faith was made perfect. And the scripture was fulfilled which says, Abraham believed God and it was accounted to him for righteousness. And he was called the friend of God. You see then that a man is justified by works and not just by his faith. Likewise was Rahab. Uh, uh, she was known by her works. The harlot also justified by works when she received the messengers and sent them out another way. For as the body without the spirit is dead, so is faith without works is also dead. It's important to understand the powerful uh, connection between who you are in Christ and how you work in the kingdom. It's important that we understand that we will not win the harvest. We will not touch the plentiful if we are not working in the kingdom. It's important that we understand that. I put this in my Bible right here. Mike didn't even know I had it in there. <clears throat> and I was reading this this morning. And, it, and, and I put in here in my Bible, kingdom works. And I have works written down here. And I have it broken up into the, to the five uh, letters. W, willing. Willing to be unselfish. If you want to work in the kingdom, willing to be unselfish. O, obedient to God's guidance. Being obedient to God and the guidance. R, I, grab a hold of this one. To a pastor, this is the most important one. Are reliable. Availability is much more important than ability. Did you hear what I said? Availability is much more important than ability. We just got to grab a hold of that and understand that. And then the K stands for kindness, the, ha the having that kind heart. And then S stands for sacrifice. No earthly thing should come before working for, for the Father and getting the Father's work done. The last thing I want to leave with you before we close. Number four, give God some time. Man, this is always a touchy situation today because time is so important. Time is so valuable. Time is consumed by everything. Now, let me say this because I shared this with my, with my uh, uh, granddaughter not too long ago. We live on borrowed time. The time you have is not yours. The time I have is not mine. The time I have is the time God gave me. God said, here's what I'm going to do for you, Pastor Tim. I'm going to give you this time. Now, it's up to you what you do with it. Somebody said the other day, well, I, I, I'm, seeing myself, I'm, I'm seeing myself coming and going. Man, I'm so busy, and I, and, and I just don't have enough time in a day. And I stopped them, and I said, look, everybody's busy, but guess what? Everybody still has 24 hours in a day. Brother Pete, you don't have more time than I do, and you don't have less time than I do. You got 24 hours in a day just like I do. So we have to begin to say, okay, what am I doing with that 24 hours, that borrowed time that I'm on? Am I too busy? And, am I, here, and, and I found this out, and you, you can just say, don't say anything. Just listen. I found out that I waste more time than I've ever wasted in my life these days. And I've also found this out. If you're not careful, everybody else will use up your time. 
if you're not careful, everybody around you will make your schedule. Whew. This is revelation. If we're not careful and begin to look at our time and say, look, this, this time has got to be fixed because God needs my time. He needs my time. He commands my time. Some people, they get shifty on the word command. Let me say it this way. God demands our time. Aren't you glad that God didn't say, okay, I want 90% for tithes, and you live on the 10%. See, God never made it too hard, Brother Mike. He never did. He always made it just enough where you know you can get involved and you can get it done and you can be part of the kingdom work. And today, he has made it to where we can get involved in the kingdom work in several ways. I put here busy, and you've heard me say this before. Busy, uh, Satan's master plan. Busy, B, being under Satan's yoke. I'm telling you now, if you're too busy in your life to serve God and you're too busy to get involved in, in, in ministry, you're too busy to do the things, you are under Satan's yoke. He has got you right where he wants you. And that's just the truth. Because we are gauged, we think we're only gauged by how much we believe in God. But I have news for you, I just read scriptures. We're gauged by the works that we do. I had to look at my life and say, man, I'm a, I'm a pastor. I'm gone. Man, I get up in the morning. I'm busy all day. I'm taking care of this, taking care of that. And, and the Holy Spirit spoke to me and said, but how much of that is ministry? How much of that is affecting the kingdom? How much of that is helping that one who's dying and going to hell get something that will get them where they need to be? Man, I had to begin to start evaluating what I do in the daytime, how I do it, what I should be doing, and how I should be praying in the daytime. Write this down. Matthew 25, 35 to 40. I call this the heart inspection. I wrote this down. This is your spiritual ECG, your spiritual EKG, your spiritual CT scan, your spiritual stress test, your spiritual MRI, and your spiritual heart cath. When you read that, some of the nurses are going, wow, Pastor, that's pretty good. Well, I researched that. I know Brian makes fun of me for researching, but I research. And I know those are important things when you're trying to find out what's wrong with the heart. Well, I got news for you. Read Matthew uh, 25 to 35 to 40, and you're going to sit there, and you're going to begin to look at your heart. You're going to begin to scan your heart. You're going to begin to look at it and say, where am I? What am I doing? See, I don't want, I, I told God, I said, Lord, if you could give me 25 years, here I am making an agreement with God. Don't you realize how silly we sound sometimes? I told him a long time ago, 19 years ago, I said, God, I really feel like you're going to give me 25 years. And here lately, God's been saying to me, if I give you 25 years. Notice God don't ever say, he says, if I give you 25 years. Will you be able to look back at that 25 years and feel good about what you've accomplished? Or will it just be, we have buildings, we got, I tell everybody everywhere I go, I get, Brother Mike, I get tired of hearing pastors tear their people up. I hate it. Because I look them in the eye and I say, I got the best people in the world. And I do. I believe that. Now, y'all ain't no, y'all ain't no prizes, okay? So don't, <laughs> Don't leave here thinking, man, well, I'm just really all that. We all got issues, amen? Some of you got issues, just like Pastor does. So don't leave here thinking everything's just great. Oh, I'm the greatest person on earth. No. I see you, our congregation, as a hand-blessed congregation. 
I see this church as God has his hand on this ministry and this church and you people, and he is guiding us, directing us, and he wants the best for every one of us. But those things are down the road, and we need to understand the call on all of us is to reach out into ministry and take care of the harvest. This first message screams out, help wanted. You know, as I, as I put up there and, 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 and somebody said, shame on churches that don't make things available. And I agree with that. If, we, if we're not making things available to people to work in the ministry, man, we got to look at our hearts as, as leaders and say, why, why is that happening? But we have done some good things to open up doors for people to minister, to fulfill Matthew 25, 35 through 40. When you read that, we've made some avenues for you to be able to do that. And I just say to you, look within yourself. The help when it signs up, will you, will you make the answer? Will you come and will you apply for the help wanted sign? And today, it's simple. We have to look within ourselves and say to ourselves, what is the most important thing? Is the most important thing that I get through life and it's all about me and my desires? And, 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 and don't get me wrong, we've got to have some of that. You've got to do diligence and make sure that you've got everything in order that you need. But how many know it's hard to put the switch on to understand that it, if I would focus more on the things of God, the other things would be okay. God said, I got that stuff. I need you to seek the kingdom first. Seek the kingdom first. The kingdom work first and all these other things will be added unto you every time i pray every time i get before god i say god i'm not even going to i'm not even going to pray lord anything for me at this time god i'm just praying that you open my eyes to the harvest that's around me because if i'm if I'm doing the harvest and I'm taking care of the harvest that's around me, God, I know I can stand on your word with confidence and know that if I'm doing the work of the Lord in the kingdom work and I'm doing what I need to be doing, what I've been called to do, that you will take care of the rest of my stuff. Amen. That includes my health. That includes my family. You say, oh, well, Pastor, you ain't been hit with a really uh, hard health thing. You know what? Again, I can't answer for that. I can't say that may be right around the corner. I don't know. But I'll tell you this much. I know who I believe in. I know that I'm persuaded who's going to take care of things. And I know who is the same yesterday, today, and forever, no matter what I go through. And yes, I know beyond a shadow of a doubt that this is a challenging message and this is a hard message. And sometimes uh, uh, I leave sometimes and go home and I tell Dina, man, I just, I didn't do good enough. I didn't get this out the way that I wanted to. I missed this and I missed that. And I begin to pick the thing apart. And all of a sudden the Holy Spirit speaks to me and says, look, it was exactly what it needed to be. So today, you may think, well, you're just bragging. No, I'm not bragging. I'm saying the Holy Spirit made today exactly what it needed to be. I believe that with all my heart. With my foolishness in preaching, he made it exactly what it needed to be today. The words that you heard today is exactly what God wanted you to hear. And I wrote this down. Compassion drives action. Listen, and compassion is driven from the heart. If we'll understand that everything starts right here, everything happens in my heart. Yeah, it hits the mind. Could have had a V8. Some of you young people don't know what I'm saying. Yeah, the battle's up here. We talked about the mind. We talked about the mind. But guess what? Once all that's all done and that God's gotten through all that and he's done all that, it has to get down here. And when it gets here, man, my compassion for people and people in need, God has really turned the fire up in that. And, man, it has truly driven me 
I'm driven today to claim the harvest. And I believe our church will claim the harvest. I believe the heart of this church will come out. And we will see the plenty for harvest. And we will do what needs to be done in the harvest today. Look at your neighbor and say, I need to get busy. I don't know about you, but when Jesus saw the harvest, he saw the needy, he saw the poor, he saw the sick, he saw the weary, he saw the lost. He saw all of that around him. And he said, guys, we've got to get busy. And again, you may say, well, I don't know what I'm going to do. But guess what? Just pray. And I'll say this. Walk through some doors. There's open doors. I mean, there's open doors all the time around here. Walk through it. Try it. I always say, give it a try. Somebody said the other day, man, you're, I'd love to come to your church. And I said, well, it may, it may or may not be what you want. And they said, well, you're a pastor. You're supposed to, you're supposed to sell your church. I said, no, I don't sell the church. I tell you this, and I tell everybody that I invite to church, come. It doesn't hurt to experience it. doesn't hurt to try it. And when you come, I'm convinced of one thing. God will be there. And when he's there, I can, I'm convinced of this, that you'll decide whether it's a good experience or a bad experience for you, but God will be there. And it's not because of me. It's not because of you. It's not because of the singing. I just know that's the promise God gave us. When we come together, he'll be there with us. The harvest is ripe. The workers are few. It's the same problem today as it was 2,000 years ago. So we all need to look within ourselves. Let's Make plans to join us on September 21st and 22nd for our Harvest Celebration Weekend. For more information, check us out on our website at sanctuarychurchbeachgrove.org. We would love to see you at a live service every Sunday morning at 1030. Remember, at the sanctuary, you have a safe place.